previous session we have dis we have started with our discussion on data types logic data type short int int long int two state data types also we have introduced right so i think uh, up to previous session uh, everything is clear so if you are having any doubt you can ask me or else we can start with the session so everything is clear right I hope uh, everything is clear now. So let's start with the, the struct data type. <clears throat> so in system log, a struct is a composite data type that allows grouping of multiple variables, which can be of different data types. So into a single object, it is particularly useful for organizing related data under one name, making the design more structured and readable. So basically we are uh, started with the data type called struct. So in system log, a struct is a composite data type that allows grouping multiple variables, which can be of different data types into a single object. So it is basically useful for organizing related data under one name, making the design more structured and readable. So what is this struct data type? So before that, any idea about array data type? in C language or anywhere. Have you heard about this array? Any idea? Yeah. So basically in this array data type, I will draw two cases. <clears throat> So which one is correct? Do you think which one do you think is correct? The first one or second one? First one is one, two, three, four, five. Second one is one, two, three, four, A. Both are arrays, but which one is correct? No, no, there is no rule that it should start with zero. Index will start with zero. This is not index, right? It is value. Index is zero, one, two, three, four. Only. Others, any idea? Okay. So let me say, so in this case, in the first case, what is it? So in the first case, you are having only the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is correct. And in the second case, you are having numbers as well as characters. Okay. So this is not true. So it is not correct. Why the array will able to hold only one type of data type. Okay. So arrays can hold only, only a specific data type. So let's say, suppose if you want to store only numbers, it should, it, uh, we should have only the numbers in that. If you want to, if you want the array to store only characters, then it should have only the characters. Array, uh, in arrays, both the data types cannot be mixed. Both data types can't be mixed in the case of arrays. Is it clear? Why the second case is wrong? Is it clear? In arrays, we cannot have multiple data types. In arrays, we should have only single data type. Okay. So that is the case of array. So in case of arrays, we should have only a single data type, only one data type. If you want, if you want to store only numbers, you should have only number data types only. Or if you want any character data type to be stored in array, it, it should have only characters, but you cannot mix both numbers and characters in the arrays. Okay. So this is, that's why the second case is wrong. Now coming to the structures, coming to the structures, you can have both. 
sorry you can have any data types or you can mix the data types in the case of structures so that is the difference between the structures and arrays okay so this is what it is written in the definition so in the system we log a struct is a composite data type that allows grouping of multiple variables which can be of different data types okay this is true in the case of structure but in the case of arrays you can have you cannot have different data types okay so there is a difference between the structure and the arrays if anyone can asks in the interview you can answer this now what are the key features of the structures so the key features are grouped variables member axis and type definition so in the case of group variables a structure can hold variables called members or fields of various types like logic int bit etc so these are basically different data types different data types you can store different data types in the case of structures so the uh, variables in the structures are called members so remember this term these are called members or these are also called as fields so the variables which are present inside these structures are called members or fields and how to access these members that is the variables which is, which are declared in structure using the dot operator okay so basically using the dot operator we are going to access the members or fields okay for example if you have declared any structure let's say if you have declared any structure like this and you have some members or you can say them fields in this okay so it can be of any data types it can be of logic in bit multiple multiple data types we can have in this structure right so if you want to access any of the member outside the structure then how to access that using this dot operator we will see how we are going to access okay next type definition structs can be also be used without or with a type def so we will discuss what is this type def in upcoming slides okay for now just remember this two points yeah next coming to the syntax uh, it is struct followed by curly braces followed by data type member name data type member name followed by uh, this is actually a pointer to this structure okay this is also called as a instance or it is also called as a instance okay for example struct you can open the curly braces and you can mention any data type for example if you want to mention logic and member name can be anything in this example it is int this is the data type followed by the age this is a member name this is data type string and the name okay you have two you have two members here what is first member it is age or this is first field and what is the second field it is of name which data type it is int and it is string so you are having a structure which is containing age as well as name as the fields in it is it clear and how to access this age and name out of this structure using dot operator using dot operator so you are going to use this instance and this dot operator and you are going to access this members out of this structure is it clear is this clear yeah i hope it is clear if you are having any doubt you can ask me let's say suppose if i want to access the age so how to access this i should use this instance person dot h and i want to store some number in this h since it is of data type int i will write person this is instance name this is field value this is the field or member and i want to store the number 22 so inside this struct age will contain the number 22 now
Now, if I want to store some name inside this structure, so how can I store person dot name is equal to let's let's say Ram. So I can store this string inside this name. So this is how we are going to store any values inside this structure. And if you want to access any uh, let's say if you want to access the value of age, how can you access that? You can access dollar display. Something you can write here, comma, person dot age. With the instance, you can access that. So this is how you are going to store the value inside the structure and access the value from the structure. Is it clear? Now, let's say if we have this structure, what are all the uh, values we have inside this structure? The first one is ID of in data type and next one is grade of logic data type, right? And another is name of string data type, right? If you want to store any number, you can simply write student underscore T dot ID you can give any value. Okay. Like this, you are going to store the values and access the values from this structure. Here you can see accessing struct members. In this example, student underscore t dot id is equal to 101. Student underscore t dot grade is equal to some grade they have given. Since it is 8 bit vector, they have given uh, in the vector form, 8 bit form they have given and student underscore t dot name is equal to they have given a string value this is a string okay. and how we are getting the uh, value so how we are displaying id is equal to percentage d grade is equal to percentage b name is equal to percentages student underscore t dot id student underscore t dot grade student underscore t dot name so this is how we are going to store some value inside this structure and we are going to access any value from this structure is it clear how to store the value and how to access the value from the structures? Can we move forward? Yeah. Next. Next coming to user defined data types. What are these user defined data types? So basically, they will help you to create an alias or new name for the existing data type. So this helps to simplify complex types and improve code reliability. It also lets you to define custom data structures like struct, union, and enum. So basically these are used to create alias or new name for an existing data type for an existing data type let's say suppose if you have a variable a right and you want this variable a of int data type you will basically write int a right so if you want a of int data type what you will do you will write int a or if you want variable B of logic data type, what you will do? Logic B. You will write logic B. Okay. So this B will be of type logic. Or if you want, let's say, suppose if you have a struct My voice is audible, right? Hello. So if we have a struct like this and let's declare this struct int a int b and I have an instance of this struct let's say uh, reference. So this reference is the instance for our struct. Next. This is the instance of this struct and if you want another 
let's say reference one this is reference one okay and if you want to declare one more struct so what you will do you will write again struct int a into b everything you will write so instead of writing all this thing we can do one thing is to declare a new data type so that declaration is done using the keyword type def that is done using the keyword type def so basically this type def allows you to create an alias or new name for an existing data type for example type def existing data type new data type so if we write type def what is the existing data type what we can give is let's say if we say logic and what is the new name you want to give for this logic? Let's say um, some random thing, uh, let's say EX, okay? So what happens is, if you want to declare, if you want to declare anything as logic A, instead of writing logic here, what you can do is, you can write EX. So what is this? A is of type EX. EX is nothing but logic. It is it is another name for this logic. That's it. Is it clear? If you have, let's say, suppose if you want, if you want to declare int A, but you want, if you want, uh, if you don't want to write int, so what you will do? Type def int C, and you will write CA. A is of int type only, but instead of writing int, what you're doing, what you're writing, C. That is, that is nothing but an alternate name for this int. That's it. Is it clear? Yeah, I hope it is clear. Now, let's see an example here. So, type def logic seven down to zero byte underscore t. What happens here? So instead of writing, so let's say, suppose we'll take two cases. Logic seven down to zero byte underscore T. Okay. And you want two datas, data one and data two to be of this logic seven down logic data type of eight bits. So what you will do, you will write logic seven down to zero data one and logic seven down to zero data two. That's it, right? So if you want data one and data two of logic data type and of eight bits, you will write this syntax. But instead of writing this, you can use a type diff. What you can do is you will uh, give the another name or alternate name for this declaration logic seven down to zero. You, you can write type def seven down to zero. You can give any name. Here I am giving byte underscore t. And this steps logic seven down to zero data one logic seven down to zero data two is replaced by byte underscore t data one and byte underscore t data 2 that's it so this is how the alternate name is given for this logic 7 down to 0 logic data type by using this type def data type is it clear